One of these paintings was painted with a yellow underpainting and one of them was painted against a white background. Artists like James Gurney and many other painters advocate for toning your canvas or your page before you paint and I wanted to do an experiment to see what are the actual effects on painting a painting with a yellow underpainting or frankly any other color. So I tried to make it as scientific as possible. I did two identical paintings on the same type of a surface of the same size using the same palette and the same paint brushes, trying to see what happens when you use a yellow underpainting and what are its effects on the end result. To be brutally honest with you, I'm not even entirely sure at this point what all of the differences are. They look different, but it's kind of, it's really interesting. Now I should say something about the fact that you cannot 100% remove variables from this. For instance, the first painting that I did was the one with the yellow underpainting. I waited 24 hours. I tried to be as mentally unbiased as possible by covering it up, not really looking at the first painting and trying to paint the second one as if it were the first time. However, I can't help but feel that maybe some things, some adjustments were made even just subconsciously because I'm painting the same scene again. So it's hard to say are some of the differences in the image because of the underpainting or the lack thereof, or are they because I painted the picture two times in a row? One thing that I want to look at is what is the color temperature of these images? Does the yellow underpainting actually affect the white balance, so to speak, of the image? Or does it all get covered up and does it not make uh, a difference? One of the things that I'm curious about and I feel that having the toned background or underpainting can, I'm assuming, psychologically influence the way that you mix colors. That's what I'm assuming, that it's actually going to make me change the way that I mix colors, but I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. So I ran a poll on Instagram showing the two paintings side by side to see which one people preferred. And the thing that surprised me was that it was really overwhelming. People actually preferred the painting that was done on the white background. That is not what I expected whatsoever. And uh, it almost caused me to totally rethink how I was going to do this video. However, I have a couple conclusions on it. One, as I said, there's no, this wasn't really a scientific experiment because we were only dealing with two paintings. I think that if I really wanted to have uh, a better representation, it would need to be a much larger sample size. And honestly, I don't feel like painting the same thing over and over again. Um, the other thing is that I think maybe some of the differences, like I said, painting the second painting better because I've already painted it before could be an issue. But let's break down what's actually happening with a colored underpainting. I think the whole idea of which one is better or which one is going to make people like the painting better or worse is kind of the wrong way about thinking about it. When I first came into this experiment, I was actually expecting the colored underpainting to elicit a better painting. And frankly, that's the wrong way to think about it because having a colored underpainting is not some magic bullet that's going to give you a better painting. Having a colored underpainting or a colored ground is just another tool in our arsenal and it's going to have an effect, but you have to decide if that effect is what you're going after or is something that you even want. So let's talk about what are the benefits of a colored underpainting, a yellow underpainting, and what do they do? So I've actually been experimenting with this for quite some time and here are some of the things that I like. So for instance, I recently did a plein air piece, one of my favorite plein air pieces that I've done this year and I toned my canvas with a mid-tone burnt sienna, which is kind of a red color. If I'm doing oil painting, a lot of times I will tone my canvas with burnt sienna, but because it was a mid-tone, I especially loved it on this session, being able to go in and to carve out the highlights and the darks at the same time. I didn't need to wait until the whole painting was blocked in. I could actually feel like I was carving out the light. If you wanna watch the video where I painted that, you can click here. But I really enjoy that process, and so I think an underpainting can really help us that way appreciate the tonal range of what we're laying down much sooner than would ordinarily be done if we have a surface that's a high tonal value or very close to white or stark white. The other thing that I think a colored underpainting can do for you, as I did in my sketchbook review, which you can watch here, I painted a golf course and I my page was painted with the dominant color, which was green. So what that allowed me to do was save a lot of time. And this painting was one of the fastest sketches that I've done all year. 
and one of my favorites. Because it was a mid-tone green, I was able to paint over the top of it opaquely from my sky, but in the, in the actual green landscape, I could kind of be very loose and know that the green that was underneath was gonna fit in with everything. And so it allowed me to cover a lot of ground really quickly. Um, so I think that that can be another thing if, you, if you're looking for the dominant color in your scene and you tone your canvas or your surface with that, that can help you actually just get your sketch done faster. One common thing to experiment would be to tone your surface like the color of a sky color, a sky blue. And even if you need to edit it, alter it, add clouds or whatever, you're already part of the way done just by showing up. So I think that's one way that a colored underpainting can help. Now the other way that, you know, I think is kind of interesting and this is probably the effect that James Gurney is suggesting with the yellow underpainting um, is that by having a strong color as an underpainting it forces you I think to be a little bit more hyper aware of your color choice and your value choices and it also forces you to go opaque so this is kind of the opposite of using the dominant color like with the golf course i could actually be somewhat transparent and know that green was going to work because 95 percent of my scene was green but if you use an out there color or a color that isn't dominant in your scene then it's going to force you to cover that up and by covering that up it's going to also force your mind and your eye to focus on tonal values and color and things and color temperature and all of those things maybe a little bit more intently than otherwise. Let's talk about what happens if you're just on a white background. I think with a white background, it uh, when I look at the two paintings that I did in this video, I kind of think that the white background will help you get more pure color. It won't be as tarnished by whatever the underpainting is. And I think that it will also in some ways make it more difficult or just a different mental challenge to dial in your tonal values. When I look at these two paintings side by side, I can see the one done on the white background is higher contrast. I actually think that might be one of the reasons why this painting was liked by my Instagram followers more. Um, we know from studying social media and things like that, that in general, people prefer a more high contrast image. Maybe I actually need to go a little bit stronger with the contrast the first time I painted it on the yellow background. But I think in this instance, it was probably me sort of misjudging the tonal values because I was looking at a stark white page that was jarring my retinas. So I think the ultimate takeaway from this is to get out there and experiment and try new things. I'm gonna continue using colored underpaintings. I enjoy how it kind of makes me think about the scene a little bit differently. I enjoy how it makes me appreciate the tonal values and that, like I said, that sense of being able to carve out the light. And I enjoy sometimes having it kind of put me back on my heels and having a unique problem to solve, especially when I use a really shocking color. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Let me know down in the comments, have you ever used a color underpainting? What are your experience with it? Do you like doing that? And uh, I would just be interested to hear what all of you guys think. In the meantime, remember you have a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you next time.